Mexico, that's the section, uh, which is on uh, on uncovering of two supermassive black holes at uh, high red state. Mm -hmm. It's from uh, mm -hmm. Ms. Barnaba. Right, please. Hello, everyone. I am Jaralambia Barnaba, and I am a PhD candidate at European University Cyprus. The title of the presentation is Uncovering, sorry, it's Uncovering Obscure Supermassive Black Holes at High Red Shift with a New Markov Chain Monte Carlo as in the 1540. I begin with some background information. There are two complementary ways of looking at galaxies images from telescopes and spectral energy distributions. On the left, we have an image of the nearby Radion galaxy Centaurus A, and at the center of this galaxy, we can see the AGN. But for objects at high redshift, we cannot see anything from the images. And this is the case where we rely on spectral energy distributions to uncover AGN. An example of this case is on the right, where we have an SMD fit plot of an obscure hyperluminous quasar at a redshift of 4.3, discovered by Eustathio et al. last year. We need multi-wavelength observations of galaxies. This is because there are three main types of activity in galaxies, normal star formation, starburst, and AGN. These three processes are associated with a lot of gas, which is associated with dust. Dust absorbs the optical and ultraviolet radiation and emits it in the infrared. So we need observations from the ultraviolet to the millimet, as well as radiative transfer models for the emission of galaxies in order to interpret the observations. In addition, we need methods to compare the models with the data and get realistic estimates of the physical parameters of interest. There are many SMD fitting methods available, such as AGN fitter and SADMC, which are MCMC-based SMD fitting codes, as well as other Bayesian approaches, such as Seagal and McPhee's. In a few minutes, I'm going to explain the advantages of our method compared to popular SMD fitting methods. Here we have an example of the SMD decomposition with radiative transfer models for luminous infrared galaxies by Herrero, Ilana et al. using SADMC. And we can derive luminosities of different galaxy components, cost, starburst, and AGM, the star formation rate, the stellar mass, the AGM fraction, the black hole mass, the dust mass, the supernova rate, and other physical quantities, which are all essential for studying galaxy evolution. Our project is named CIGNUS. CIGNUS stands for Cyprus Models for Galaxies and their Nuclear Spectra. And this project is funded by ESA. Um, within the CIGNUS project, we are developing a new MCMC as in defeating code. I will present more details of the code as well as some of our results in the following slides. And we will discuss how we can use our methods to uncover obscure AGN at high redshift, such as the hyperluminous obscure quasar at a redshift of 4.3, studied by HELP, the famous galaxy GN20, and the recently discovered galaxy COS87529 at a redshift of 6.853. Our method promises to be very useful for analyzing multi-wavelength SEDs of obscure supermassive black holes from both ground-based and spaceboard facilities, such as Spitzer, Herschel, and the James Webb Space Telescope. Within Cygnus, we have developed a new method for fitting radiative transfer models to data using a Markov chain Monte Carlo code. The MCMC code we use is MC, which is a publicly available code developed by Foreman McKay et al. in 2013. Some of the main reasons of why we chose to use MC is that it is, are that it is a fast code and it is also easy to parallelize it. Our approach is to fit the ultraviolet to submillimeter as it is exclusively with radiative transfer models. And this is one of the novel features of our method. The models currently constitute three libraries. 
We have a library of starters models, which is assumed to be independent of Redshift. A library of AGM torus models, which are also assumed to be independent of Redshift. And for the spheroidal model, a different library is selected depending on the Redshift. We have data from multi-wavelength observations of a large sample of galaxies. To test the method, we use the sample of approximately 100 galaxies of various types and at a range of redshifts. We speed share infrared spectrograph spectroscopy and Herschel photometry. The data are fitted with our method, and then we use the post-processing routine we have developed in order to extract the physical quantities of galaxies. We make use of four different AGN models to constrain the properties of the obscuring torus. These are the Cygnus smooth AGN torus model, the smooth AGN torus model of Frigedal, the two-phase AGN torus model Skiptor of Stalevsky et al., and the two-phase AGN torus model of Sibermorkian et al. Then I've written down seven novelties of our approach. The first novelty is that our method is more physically motivated compared to popular energy balance methods, such as Seagal and McPhee's, that I mentioned before, and that do not take properly into account the effects of dust in a realistic geometry. In addition, our method is versatile and it takes comparable computing time to these energy balance methods. The versatility of the method was demonstrated by a study with Al this year, who fitted two ULERCs with dual AGN, one observed AGN and one phase on. We can also use two different star paths to model double nuclei, such as the ULERC R220. We run the code on a supercomputer, as MC is much faster and easier to parallelize than MCMC codes like SADMC. Furthermore, it is possible to determine a photometric redshift using all of the data used in the feed. As I have already said, we explore the impact of four different AGN models in order to constrain the properties of the obscuring torus. Uh, we can also add a component of polar dust in the fitting, which is an important component in AGN. And finally, we can fit an SMD in comparable time with either a spheroidal or spiral host galaxy model. This figure shows how we use MCMC in our method. So we have the data and our three libraries of models. We fit them within the MCMC code, which is MC in our case. And we become able to derive physical quantities such as the stellar mass, the star formation rate, the star best time scale, the AGN fraction, the dust masses, and the luminosities of each component, as well as the total luminosity. Now I will present some of our results. To give an impression of the results, firstly, I selected six representative galaxies from the Herus sample of 42 local Eulerks. I present the ultraviolet to submillimeter SEDs of these galaxies using the Cygnus radiative transfer models for Starpest, AGN, uh, Tori, and host galaxies. The Spitzer IRS spectroscopy data are included in this fitting at the spectral resolution, which is matched to the spectral resolution of the radiative transfer models. Uh, Herus studied some of the most luminous local Eulerks, including famous objects like R220, Markarian 231, and Markarian 273. Here, as in all the following plots, we plot star pest in red, AGN torus in blue, and spheroidal host in orange. The total emission is shown by the black line. I selected to include in this presentation our SED fit plot of the most luminous infrared galaxy in the local universe, discovered by Yves et al. in 2014. This is an example of an interacting lurk, which exhibits one of the deepest silicate absorption features observed in a galaxy. Uh, according to our feed, this is an AGN-dominated object. We have also feeded the famous galaxy GN20, 
at a redshift of 4.05. It is the brightest submuivet galaxy in the Kuznov area and one of the most luminous starburst galaxies known at any redshift, embedded in a rich protocluster of star forming galaxies. Although the luminosity of GN20 is dominated by the starburst, our fit predicts that around 10% of the luminosity may be due to an AGN shown in blue. We have also fitted many objects studied by HELP. HELP was a large project which assembled ultraviolet to submillimeter SEDs of over 170 million galaxies. The European University Cyprus was one of the participating institutes in this project. HELP is much deeper than WISE. Its database is public and it is therefore most suitable for determining the space density of obscured quasars at redshift higher than 4 and exploring the physics of AGNs as well as their role in galaxy evolution at those redshifts. Here we have a hyperluminous galaxy at a photometric redshift of 4.3, discovered in the Cosmos field, which was one of the fields studied by HELP. I present the SED of this galaxy and fit it with the Cygnus multi-component radiative transfer models. As we can see, this is also an AGN dominated object. Finally, I demonstrate our SND fitting of the recently discovered hyperluminous galaxy COS87529 at a redshift of 6.853 in the Cosmos field. This object appears to be similar to the HELP object shown in the previous slide, and its luminosity is also dominated by the AGN. It's amazing that we can feed a galaxy at almost a redshift of seven because this proves the power of our method. As a conclusion, in this contribution, I have demonstrated our development of a new fast MCMCS in defeating code, which uses exclusively radiative transfer models. The code takes comparable computing time to popular energy balance codes. We are testing it with a big range of obscure AGN in the redshift range of 0 to 7. By fitting for different AGN torus models, we become able to constrain the properties of the obscuring torus in AGN. And finally, our method promises to be very useful for uncovering obscure supermassive black holes in large databases like HELP. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Question.